The Eye of Horus activation is a portal connecting to fifth dimensional light, energy, and greater frequency. The EOH activation opens the door to a reservoir of celestial energy within the energy field. This reservoir of celestial energy anchors and infuses the energy field, continuing the journey by going out into the universe and constantly returning and renewing itself within the person. The Divine Earth Mother strengthens and aligns human connection with the sacred Mother Earth who nurtures them. While building this reservoir, recalibrate physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual bodies, releasing old programming and negative patterns and creating a more robust matrix. This in turn activates Divine Blueprint and allows it to connect to the light body more efficiently. The light body is an energy body that exists at a higher level than chakras, closer to the source. There are 10 centers, seven vibrational energy body centers, and three light body centers that power and form the light body. The first three centers regulate the energy a person absorbs from his surroundings. They transform less harmonious energies into harmonious ones and use all the energy around them to help them ascend. These three centers are the foundation of their light body's power. Working with these centers may give them a greater sense of personal power and an improved ability to stay centered and release stuck emotional energy. The upper vibrational energy body centers promote flow and harmony while transporting them to higher mental realms and dimensions beyond time and space. Add light to these thoughts by working with these centers and opening the portal to higher dimensions. Many illumined, expanded states of awareness are possible, and they can feel deeply insightful and blissful and take them beyond thought into direct experiences of beingness. Three light body centers exist that can improve their life's balance, clarity, and harmony by awakening these centers and connecting with the source. Awakening the light body is like gaining new eyesight, allowing a person to see, sense, or feel the universe's higher, more beautiful energies and incorporate them into daily life. The EOH activation awakens your light body in the same way it was done in ancient temples long ago and is still practiced today on the inner planes between teacher and student. It is an initiation process, among other things. Awakening the light body is one path to enlightened states of consciousness and living on Earth as the higher self and soul. It awakens the person to draw the opportunities to make a difference in the world as they begin to hold and radiate more light. The awakening light body can assist people in having a clear vision of their life's purpose, lifting the veils so they can see more of their purpose and who they are. Awakening the light body can assist in achieving the illumined states necessary to bring through their work. It can help create states of inner illumination, mental clarity, and an open heart. A person can more easily choose how they want to feel and the thoughts they want, be more focused, mentally alert, and physically vibrant. As their energy becomes higher, more beautiful and radiant, people will act and think more lovingly around them without trying to change them. Working with these centers can enhance any other path or technique to enjoy. A person's light body is the body of light that creates the next step in their evolution. The awakening light body introduces higher, finer light frequencies into their physical, emotional, and mental energy bodies. With these finer light frequencies, they gradually become more aware of the higher dimensions and themselves as it exists in them. They can experience heightened, blissful, peaceful, loving, joyful, and insightful states of consciousness as they awaken the light body. They can reach higher, expanded states, open the upward channel, and expand their consciousness to experience the source directly. They can use these energies to create the life they want in various practical ways, such as if you have a strong inner desire to change the way you live your life, if you want to expand your consciousness, deepen your sense of your life's purpose, and improve your ability to connect to your source and your inner knowing.
if you're ready to learn how to merge your willpower with your heart and mind for balanced, harmonious living. If you want to learn how to surf the chaos and navigate the flow of the energies that make up your universe. If you're on a path of accelerated self-growth, along with the higher vibrations of light they receive from initiation, they can help stabilize and support the Earth increase in frequency and vibration by accessing and holding more 5D light as they go about their daily lives, with the conscious intention of being a vehicle of light. The upcoming Earth changes predicted by many, including the Hopi, Edgar Case, Gordon Michael Scallion and others, will be influenced by the higher frequencies that every person strives to hold for themselves, the planet and humanity. The lightworkers of this planet know that one can hold the energy by raising consciousness and moving into the fifth dimension. It entails anchoring this light during times of calm in our lives or environments and during times of temporary disruption, upset or change. They demonstrate the true meaning of readiness to evolve by adapting and surviving. The Eye of Horus, a concept and symbol in ancient Egyptian religion, represents well-being, healing, and protection. It derives from the mythical conflict between the god Horus and his rival Set, in which Set tore out one of Horus' eyes, and the eye was subsequently healed with the assistance of another deity. Horus subsequently offered the eye to his deceased father Osiris, and its revitalizing power sustained Osiris in the afterlife. The eye of Horus was thus equated with funerary offerings and all the offerings given to the deities in temple rituals. It could also represent other concepts such as the moon, whose waxing and waning was associated to the injury and restoration of the eye. The Eye of Horus symbol, a stylized eye with distinctive markings, was believed to have magical protective power and frequently appeared in ancient Egyptian art. Horus's eyes were painted on coffins during the First Intermediate Period and the Middle Kingdom. The Eye of Horus refers to the ancient mystery school creational geometry teachings encoded by Isis and Osiris and left behind with their priests in Egypt. In the matrix of time, everything is myth, maths, and metaphor laced with eye symbology. Everything is viewed through an eye of creation, conscious creation, a projected illusion in the alchemy of time. Everything sweeps forth from the eye, conscious experience, and then returns to the eye as reality patterns create and recreate in loops. Think spiraling galaxies. Consider virtual reality. The eyes are windows to the soul. The eye is a lens that allows us to see and become consciously aware of our experiment in the third dimension. The eye has a pupil. We are students in a university experiencing consciously through the lens of time or virtual reality. The eye is the window to the soul and all aspects of your soul experiencing other grids. The sixth chakra is the third eye. It's common to see an eye or eyes looking back at them as it begins to activate and open. A person's perception of dreams, of colors and personal life and relationships will be altered. They ascend to a higher frequency, which allows them to expand their consciousness and perceive reality on multiple levels and dimensions. This can be a quantum leap in perception and can be life-changing as they discard patterns that no longer work in higher frequency. This acceleration of time alters their overall perception. The opening of the eye represents a period of awakening, the evolution of consciousness and the activation of your DNA. The opening of the eye, iris, isis, eye, can be the physical eye or what is known as the third eye, which has a lens and is the pineal gland. The camera slows down the action, allowing us to perceive events as linear when they're not, 
Exploring in linear time enables them to experience emotions through an electromagnetic field, duality, polarity, love versus fear. They see balance as they awaken and remember that they are soul sparks, the twinkling lights they see, who are in a physical form that's evolving back to its original creation. Whole shifts of consciousness, Earth changes both physically and as metaphors. There's much symbology linked with the image of the eye, all linking to the eye as a metaphor for the source of creation, God, Eye of God. When people are dreaming or meditating, they may see an eye that is either opened or closed. The symbol for awakened consciousness is the opened eye. The Eye of Horus is depicted as an ancient Egyptian hieroglyphic symbol. Many have heard the story of Osiris and Isis and the birth of their son Horus. It wasn't until the Eye of Horus activated them that they realized what it meant. The Eye is the eternal eye through which the masters and lords of light generate physical creation using a template of vibratory patterns. The Divine Creation Father's Eye coordinates Elohim's mind so that the Divine Image can be passed down to all generations of creations. The Eternal Eye allows the Father's living light to shine through His garment and form the light substances. Light is transmitted to the human being through the Eye of Horus from the Father's living light via sacred geometry, transforming them into a light being. This is a remembrance of Lemuria, a very ancient system used on the Earth plane but forgotten until now. When it's stated that you are transformed into a light being through the Eye of Horus, this does not imply that this is the only way. It's believed that everyone is receiving the Earth's current accelerated energies. People drawn to activate through the Eye of Horus energies are the way showers to someone's attention. The ancient mystery school teachings of creational geometry encoded by Isis and Osiris and left behind with their priests in Egypt are referred to as the Eye of Horus. These are the same souls who serve as priests in Atlantis. They carry this genetically encoded information in their DNA, which was activated when we passed through the year 2012. Since the beginning of this reality program, there's been additional information hidden in the ancient mystery school teachings. All hidden data will be revealed now, as the Hall of Records Golden Capstone was activated on December 12, 1212, at 1212 AM and PM in the Great Pyramid King's Chamber, bringing healing, enlightenment, and ascension. The calibration for the time clock of reality was reset and consciousness shifted. The eye symbol was also rendered as a hieroglyph. Egyptologists have long believed that hieroglyphics representing pieces of the symbol stand for fractions in ancient Egyptian mathematics. The Egyptians sometimes used signs that represented pieces of the Wedjot eye hieroglyph. In 1911, Egyptologist Georg Mahler noted that in the New Kingdom, votive cubits were inscribed stone objects with a length of one cubit. These hieroglyphs were inscribed with similarly shaped symbols in the hieratic writing system, a cursive writing system whose signs derived from hieroglyphs. The hieratic signs represented fractions of a hecat, the basic Egyptian volume measure. Mahler hypothesized that the Horus I hieroglyphs were the original hieroglyphic forms of the hieratic fraction signs and that the inner corner of the eye stood for one half, the pupil for one fourth, the eyebrow for one eighth, the outer corner for one sixteenth, the curling line for one thirty second, and the cheek mark for one sixty fourth. In 1923, T. Eric Peet pointed out that the hieroglyphs representing pieces of the eye were not found before the New Kingdom, and he suggested that the hieratic fraction signs had a separate origin but were reinterpreted during the New Kingdom to have a connection with the Eye of Horus. 
In the same decade, Mahler's hypothesis was included in standard reference works on the Egyptian language, such as Ägyptische Grammatik by Adolf Ehrman and Egyptian Grammar by Alan Gardner. Gardner's treatment of the subject suggested that the parts of the eye were used to represent fractions because, in myth, the eye was torn apart by set and later made whole. Egyptologists accepted Gardner's interpretation for decades afterward. Jim Ritter, a historian of science and mathematics, analyzed the shape of the hieratic signs throughout Egyptian history in 2002. He concluded that the further back we go, the further the hieratic signs diverge from their supposed Horus I counterparts, thus undermining Mahler's hypothesis. He also re-examined the votive cubits and argued that they do not equate the eye of Horus signs with the hieratic fractions, so even Pete's weaker form of the hypothesis was unlikely to be correct. Nevertheless, the 2014 edition of James P. Allen's Middle Egyptian, an introductory book on the Egyptian language, still lists the pieces of the Wedjad eye as representing fractions of a Hecat. So, Mahler's Horus eye hieroglyphs were the original hieroglyphic forms of the hieratic fraction signs. One half was represented by smell, represented by the right side of the eye in the shape of a nose. According to the pyramid text, Behold, the fire rises in Abydos, and it comes, I cause it to come, the eye of Horus. It is set in order upon thy brow, O Osiris Kenti Amenti. It is set in the shrine and rises on thy brow. One quarter, the pupil represented sight or the sensation of light in one quarter of the cases. According to the pyramid text, perfect is the eye of Horus. I have delivered the eye of Horus, the shining one, the ornament of the eye of Ra, the father of the gods. One eighth represented thought symbolized by the brow. The pyramid text says, the eye of Horus hath made me holy. I will hide myself among you, O ye stars which are imperishable. My brow is the brow of Ra. One sixteenth, represented by hearing, an arrow pointing towards the ear on the right side of the eye. The pyramid text says, That which has been shut fast dead hath been opened by the command of the eye of Horus, which hath delivered me. Established are the beauties of the forehead of Ra. One thirty-second. Taste was represented by the sprouting of wheat or grain from the planted stalk by a curved tail. The pyramid text says, Come, the eye of Horus hath delivered for me my soul. My ornaments are established on the brow of Ra. Light is on the faces of those who are in the members of Osiris. 164th was represented by touch, a leg touching the ground. The pyramid text says, I shall see the gods and the eye of Horus burning with fire before my eyes. 